What's up guys? Today I'm going to talk about the standard Mandel Fleming model. Basically, there's two things you must take note when it comes to this model. It is that um, in the short run, it predicts that there is perfect capital mobility. And then the economy is having a fixed exchange rate policy. And then I'm going to examine two kinds of um, different policy. The first, the first one being the expansionary monetary policy. The second one is the expansionary fiscal policy which I'll cover later on and then we're gonna examine the, uh, examine the effects of um, whether each policy is effective in increasing the output of the economy so first of all I'll start with the expansionary monetary policy and then we're gonna assume that the government buy bonds and then we know that the government buying bonds is going to increase the money supply and then this will actually send um, our LM to shift down because there's an increase in money supply in the economy we have a rightward shift of LM curve it's point A As we can see from here, there is a decrease in interest rate and an increase in output. So we have our point B here. So actually at B, we're going to have a um, massive capital outflow because the interest rate of our economy is actually lower than before it is at I2 instead of I1 so people want to put their money um, in foreign countries because they will earn higher interest rate over there so our change in capital account is going to be less than zero and then the increase in output is going to cause a increase in import because the increase in income is going to make people spend more so they will actually have an increase in um, import and which means our next export is it is going to be less than zero but under this Monday of Fleming model perfect capital mobility we're talking about the change in capital account being more significant than the change in our current account which is our next export and then together, both of this, is, it is going to cause a, our BP to be less than zero because both of this, they contribute to a negative BP. Which means that our local currency depreciates. So under the fixed action rate policy, the central bank will buy back local currency because they want to keep their, uh, they want to keep the exchange rate um, at a certain level, which is at I one. Otherwise, anything less than I one or more than I one is going to cause a massive capital inflow outflow, and then this adversely it will affect the exchange rate between a couple of countries. And then in this case, we're talking about say country A and country B. And then we know that when the government buys local currency, there will be a decrease in money supply. It will decrease and our RM will shift up. And as the RM shift up, the interest rate is going to increase. And this will actually send our capital account in an increasing amount. It was previously was negative and then now the change in capital account is going to be more than zero and then this adjustment will continue until sorry is is lm2 over here this adjustment will continue until the lm2 shift back to your lm1 where your point a is equal to point b the final equilibrium and then your interest rate will go back to this, to normal and your y1 is equal to y3 
as you can see from here that the monetary policy is completely ineffective in increasing output because we have our output back at the original output level which is y1 as you can see from here and then because the government is adopting a fixed action rate policy so we have our interest rate back at um, i1 and then next i'm going to talk about expansionary uh, fiscal policy sorry i have the diagram here everything's the same your islm bp perfectly uh, perfect capital mobility the only difference is that instead of LM shifting your eyes will actually shift right now let's assume that the government is having a balanced budget policy where increase in government spending will be more than the increase in I mean the decrease in taxes because of the multiplier for the IS function So this increase in government spending, it will actually shift the IS outwards to your IS too. I'm gonna draw it for you guys. IS two, initial point A, and then here we have a point B. And then from here, basically, you guys can see that there is a increase in interest rate and an increase in output. And then this increase in interest rate and output, first of all, the increase in interest rate is going to send your capital account. The change in capital account is going to be more than zero because funds will flow in because the interest rate right now is higher than um, back before, which is your I1. I2 is more than I1. And then with a higher output, there will be an increase in import and then this will cause your net export to be less than zero and then like I have said just now that um, it is always the change in capital account is always more significant than the change in capital account which is more than the bottom so this will actually send your BP to be more than zero and it means that your local currency appreciates because people want a currency it is more valuable right now and then back to where we are fixed exchange rate policy right so the central bank is going to buy um, sorry central bank is going to sell local currency right now and then we know that from selling local currency it is going to increase the money supply and your IOM is going to shift right We have our OM2 and then we have a new output level of Y3 and interest rate back at I1. The adjustment is from here is actually that as the government sells local currency, it is going to increase the money supply gradually. So the RM is going to shift slowly and as it shifts as it shifts downward from here, interest rate is going to decrease and then the change in capital account will be less than zero and the adjustment continue until point D over here where interest rate is back at the usual level but from here we can see that there's actually an increase in output level at Y3 So we can see that an expansionary fiscal policy it is actually more effective in increasing output because looking at the previous diagram, the one in blue, we have the output back at Y1. But for here we have an increase in output, interest rate stay the same. So this this expansionary 
fiscal policy is actually effective in increasing output, which is the economy as a whole. That's pretty much my analysis of the mother of Fleming model. Thank you.